Hey folks, so I recently picked up the Raspberry Pi 5. Here it is, uh, I got the official case for it. Um, and I got the official power supply for it. You can see down here, it's a 27 watt uh, power supply. I would highly recommend you get that for this device since it, it supplies the right amount, of, just the right amount of power for it. And I got the official case. It's got a nice cooling fan on it and, um, you know, gives it a nice little house. It's cheap. Um, <clears throat> I also got the SanDisk Pro um, Ultimate SSD card, which is the fastest one I can find. I'll leave a link in the uh, description below. Um, but I figured since I got this, I first thing I'd do is try it for some audio music production and see what this thing can do. This is the 8 gigabyte model. And the first thing you'll notice is there's not really any sort of audio input output on this thing. So <clears throat> I have the Volt 176 USB audio interface. And um, this is a class uh, compliant audio interface, meaning that with Linux, you should just be able to plug it in and it just works, which happily I found out was the case. Um, I'll show you that in a few minutes. Um, I've also got my microcorg um, plugged into the MIDI interface here on the back. This this particular unit, I got it because it has MIDI and just a single input. That's all I need um, since it's just me. Um, I have my microphone here that I plug into it. I use my microcorg as a as a MIDI keyboard. You could also get something like this. Like if you don't, if your interface doesn't have any sort of MIDI, you could get something like this Nano Key. This is a cheap little USB thing that you can use to input keyboard and so it's a nice cheap really handy thing I use it for travel usually it's a nice handy thing to have around and it works fine with the Raspberry Pi as well um, there's also a top that goes on this case I leave it off so I can see the fan if the fans going or not but it probably I mean the fan is super silent I mean that's right up to it So it's, I just leave the top off of it for now. Okay, so here is my Raspberry Pi 5 desktop. Um, just a quick note if you're new to Linux. Um, the Raspberry Pi uh, 5 OS now uses Wayland as its desktop um, arrangement or, you know, desktop, pro uh, what runs the desktop basically. The old one was called X11. And you could run across problems with certain programs not running correctly under Wayland um, windowing system is what I meant to say. But if you open up the Raspberry Pi config program, you can switch between X11 and Wayland if you have problems with any programs and want to switch back and forth. I'm in X11 right now because the screen recording program I'm using right now wouldn't work correctly with Wayland. Well, with Wayland, so just a note. I haven't run across anything with any audio applications, but just a quick note. But anyways, first off, I was very happy to see that there is a version, an ARM Linux version of Reaper. This is a program I use a lot on my main PC. It's my main DAO. And uh, also happy to see that there is a version of Sunvox for ARM Linux. This is also a tracker program I like to use. Um, but if you look at my sound and video menu here, I went to the add remove programs and found a lot of different pro audio programs to try out. I barely even scratched the surface here. Um, <clears throat> let's start Reaper. <clears throat> and Reaper, I mean, just right out of the box, it sees, you go to the audio device, it sees my, my, um, Volt 176, you know, right off the bat. And you probably want to stick with ALSA as your audio system for starting out. Um, there's another one called Jack that you can use to, to route pro, to audio between different programs, but ALSA is just a good one to start with. You can explore Jack later. Um, it also sees the MIDI on my device, so that's good. Um, I'll put it in a... Uh, <clears throat> virtual instrument track and if you look I downloaded a bunch of instruments free instruments and plugins and everything and if you look there's just 
a whole bunch of drum machines, synthesizers, you name it. Just a whole ton of different stuff, free stuff that you can use to get you started. I mean, this synthesizer Yoshimi, it's, it'd take me days just to go through this one. But, um, <clears throat> anyways, let me close this out. The other program I really like, Sunbox. This is a, um, this is a tracker program. If you've never heard of a tracker, basically this is your inner, your, where you put your samples here. It works kind of like an old time player piano. It rolls at whatever speed you want, BPM, and you just, these numbers represent samples. You plug in samples and as it goes by your samples, it plays it. Um, and here are your instruments, instrument parameters. Here's your timeline down here. It's trackers have kind of a, um, kind of a steep learning curve, but they're a lot of fun, a really creative way to, um, you know, writing music if you haven't tried it before. I, I'll write usually my drums in here and then save it as an audio file and then move the audio file to Reaper. <clears throat> I'm going to have another video after this to show you me actually building a song. This video is just to kind of just show you what's available. Um, <clears throat> another tracker, a really advanced tracker, is called Renoise. There's also an ARM Linux version of it I was really surprised to see as well. <clears throat> but this is a this is a really advanced tracker with just all kinds of neat features um, that you may want to look at too. And if trackers aren't your thing, there's um there's also a program called LMMS <clears throat> that's kind of more aimed at the people who like to use loops and things like that, um, kind of like Fruity Loops, things like that. You just, you know, you just drop your loops in here and, um, you know, you can just arrange your song with loops if that's your kind of thing. But, uh, I mean, lot, lots of different options here. I mean, I'm barely even scra uh, scratching the surface. Okay, so this was just a quick little, just an introduction, a quick little dirty introduction just to show you what was available for the Raspberry Pi uh, Pi 5 as of December 2023? Um, it's you know for an $80 computer, you know, round it up to 100 for just a couple of little accessories you need. It's a nifty little. I mean, it's quite capable as an audio machine. And I'm going to show in my next video. I'm going to do a multi-track settings with um, a bunch of different effects and sounds and show you how it handles how it can handle a load. But if you do end up coming to a point where you need more power or it starts to bottleneck, the one good thing about the Raspberry Pi 5 is it now has a PCIe bus built in so you can add a fast um, M2 uh, drive to this machine later if you want to, which is be much, much faster than the built-in micro SD card reader um, if that ends up becoming a bottleneck and another thing with the Raspberry Pi 5 is as long as you have proper cooling on here you probably be better there's like a five dollar official cooling fan that mounts on the processor you can buy you can clock this thing up to three gigahertz just and it runs perfectly stable all you have to do is just edit a text file there's you know, there's all kinds of videos already showing how to do that. It's super easy. But as long as you have the proper cooling, uh, it should be fine. So if you end up needing more performance down the road, you can add an M2 and clog it up to 3 gigahertz, and there you go. So, all right, another video coming soon. Thanks.